Hello and welcome to the Bible in Depth. I'm called Alex Savaiga, your host. We have questions that you sent to us from the book of Genesis. We studied the book of Genesis and concluded it on the podcasts, and we got your questions from that book, and we want to answer them. And we said we'll be bringing different people on the panel to try and answer the questions that you sent. We might not give you a conclusive response, but we'll try to give you something that can help answer the questions that you sent. Today on the show, I'm joined by a special guest. He is special to me because he dedicated me when I was barely a week old. And uh, he's a man of God. He's a senior pastor of Omega Healing Center. And I love the way he discusses scripture and his analysis of the scripture. Welcome with me, Pastor Michael Chaze. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Alex. I believe we are going to have a fabulous time. Let me start by asking, was I a pretty baby? Well, you are stocky <laughs> right from the start. You are, I think you are, you appeared, you are beautiful. But hey. so I think that's what you are. So, you are not a handsome, beautiful boy. <laughs> you are a heavy duty. <laughs> I didn't know I had some weight. It disappeared stocky along girl. the way. No, it's still there. Hey. Potently hidden. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we have some questions that yeah. people asked us. Yes. We've been studying the book of Genesis. Yeah, I've been con- following. We concluded the first 50 chapters wow. of Genesis. Yes, been and people sent in their questions. I know. And uh, I'll start with this. When we were discussing, we found that there are some issues with translations. Yeah. Because when it comes to the Bible, everyone has their version. Yeah. Some have New King James Version, other mm. King James Version, mm. NIV, and all different sorts of, of versions. Mm. And now, in uh, on the fifth day of creation, we have mm. an issue where KJV says, and the water brought forth the birds mm. of the air. Mm. Then NIV and all the other versions say, and the water abound. Mm. Where does this lead us? Because we need to know about translations. How yeah. do these translations come? Thank you, Alex. Um, my effort to explain such would, uh, I would begin by saying the original, we believe as Christians that the Bible is infallible. Mm. It, is, it is accurate. Mm. And when we talk about Bible, there we mean about the original intent word of God. Yes. And when he delivered it, he delivered it through a given culture where it was written basically in in ancient language of Hebrew yes. and Greek mainly, yes. and there's Aramaic, of course, in the New Testament. Uh, the bulk of um, of the Old Testament is in Hebrew, yes. and uh, the bulk of the New Testament is Greek and Aramaic. Yes, so Old uh, Testament is Hebrew. Hebrew. Yeah. New Testament is Greek. Yeah, but there's Emperor Ptolemy mm. who came when the Greek Empire was expanding yes. and he required that all books be translated into Greek. That is to make the book relevant. So does that imply the people who knew Hebrew yeah. were not able to... The people who knew Greek were yeah. not able to interpret the Old Testament in Hebrew. And they couldn't read and uh, interact well with Hebrew. Just like we, uh, when, when empires would rise, civilizations would rise, there would be a dominant language. Yes. So in the, when the Hebrews were taken over by the Greek, so the most important thing, because the Greek were scholarly, they wanted to know what is this volume, the huge volumes of book. Yes. So they were, the Hebrew books were, they were subject to scholars, Greek scholars, who knew Hebrew, 70 of them. So you always find the word Septuagint. Yes. Septuagint is the Greek effort to translate the Hebrew into Greek. Okay. So translation begins with 70 people. That's a huge panel. Yes. Translating the Old Testament. Was there any specific qualification to be part of the 70? Or? Yeah, you had to be scholarly. You had to be mm. knowledgeable about... Um, Hebrew as a language, yes. 
yeah. and you had to have the strength of the Greek language. Yeah. And you had to be, you know, uh, being, being st studious and knowledgeable yeah. is an old fact in the Greek circles. Yeah. So 70 people sat yeah. and translated Hebrew into Greek. And when you read your OSA, they will see that in the Septuagint, yeah. I mean, the Septuagint, it means, well, it, it has a Hebrew translation, it has a ori An Hebrew original, original yes. mm. but it was translated Septuagint by the Sept, Sept is 70. Oh, yes. So the 70 sat and translated. So, so the tra tradition of translating to make the Word of God um, accessible and understandable to other traditions that as it expanded, I think begins from their own words. Yeah. So now when you bring in the human factor mm -hmm. that humans sit, discuss, you find that sometimes the, or the, the original message may be tampered with the forces of culture, mm -hmm. forces of times, mm -hmm. and what we call etymology. They, the change of meanings of words. Of words over now, time. yeah. Now, when you talk about originality, where did things come from? Mm. In this generation, we would like to talk about things originating from cells, from atoms. Mm. But the Hebrew way of originating things mm. is that the whole world began in water. Yes. So that's when you go to the irred irreducible minimum, mm. over where you cannot rewind anymore. It all Your begins in water. water so it. this sept of seventh yeah. should have a, a mindset that is the same that we begin from the water. We begin from the water. Mm. So I, the, I think the translators on the scripture you are talking about, mm. when they talk about the origination of all creation from water, birds of the air, and another one saying abounding, mm. and they are almost like saying everything Comes came from, from water. water. So. We shouldn't have any trouble because people are developing something for mm. the good of everyone to read, yeah, to but comprehend. We, we need to face the fact that when a message falls into the hands of a, a person, it's also falling in a, in a mindset, a paradigm and presupposition. Mm. You'll find the message Bible mm. being translated by one person in his garage. So, so he, that is subject he's, he's, to only one opinion. So he sat down mm -hmm. and came up with what they understand. He comes up with what he understands. Mm. Then when it's NIV, there's a committees yes. which sit. And it depends. NIV has gone through many owners. Yeah. So well, There was he, an original owner yeah, of NIV. Yeah. But it was a committee. It's a committee of translators. So it is from that original that we get other... Yeah, budgets. NIV is running. Yes. Yes. So you 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 read, but it's always good to have more than one translation. Yes. And if possible, what we recommend is always to try to find an interlinear Bible where you get you get the original language and the translation the translator got out. Yes. So in Bible exegesis you always need the original language. To be your key tool. So it means for the Old Testament, yeah. you would have to get at least the Hebrew, the Hebrew. context because it's the original. Yeah. Do we still have people who have the correct interpretation of Hebrew? Who can give us Hebrew in its right form as a yeah. language? Yeah, Hebrew of course has metamorphosized. Mm. But when you go to the interlinear Bible, mm. it kind of keeps you close to the original concept of the Hebrew language of those particular words. Now the trouble would be how you interpret that Hebrew word. Yes. Because still you have to take it out of Hebrew to the language of your understanding. Now for us here in Uganda, yeah. we have Luganda, we have Lujankore, we have other languages. Mm -hmm. And we see interpret uh, translations mm -hmm. of those versions. Mm -hmm. How do these come about? Are they still by committees? Yeah. Now, the Uganda Bible Society has got translators. Yes. And um, um, the, the challenge has always been that people of pronounced stature, mm. people who are academic, 
are called over mm. and they help in translating. You can find like in Uganda, we, we have had a translation which, which involved the justices, the mm. justice Ogola, yes. uh, the status, the studiousness, the intellectualness mm. is put in plus the culture. So yes. that people can debate what is the best way to refer to a cup. Is it mm. to call it a beaker, mm. a cup, a container? Yes. Then you rationalize that and rule out this is the best way in our culture. We can call it a cup. So as far as the Bible is concerned, yeah. it is translating to make it easy for someone living in a particular time to yeah. understand as per their language. Yeah but also trying as much as possible to keep the original original message. Do you personally, the infallibility of the do, scripture. Do you personally have a position you lie on which version might be more reliable? Yeah, you know, once you get conversant to Bible studies, mm. you start knowing that behind the translations there is a doctrine. Okay. Now, Bibles... Uh, the churches in the world fall in certain categories. There are Pentecostals, there are Episcopal churches, mm. there are Baptist churches, there are ESV, there are Reformed churches, and there are cults. Mm. So cults, for them to have their doctrine binding, would prefer to do a translation that, favors that will them. favor yeah. their doctrine to to reduce the level of explanations they have to make. Okay. So in that case, when you are reading about grace mm. and you are reading an ESV, yes. you will get grace in the shape of the Reformed theologian. Okay. If you are going to read the KJV, you will get grace in an Episcopal understanding. Mm. Mm. So the word is the same. The, the, sometimes the paradigms determine how a group of denominations will dominantly present a concept. So we have different denominations coming out with different translations to support yeah, yeah. what they believe in. And once you bring all the four together, all five denominations, mm. and the concept is sustained, yes. then it means you are very, that concept is very adoptable. All right. Mm. Yes. Thank you. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. After eating from the forbidden tree, Adam and Eve realized that they were naked and made an effort to cover their shame by sewing fig leaves together for clothing. The garden, which was once a dwelling of joy and fellowship with God, had suddenly become a place of fear. The serpent was cast more than any other animal, and as a result, the offspring of the woman was to crush its head, a promise fulfilled in Christ's victory over Satan. The woman was to experience increased sorrow and pain in childbirth while the ground was cursed for man's sake, and it was to bring forth thorns and thistles, which would make the process of tilling harder. Jesus, bearing the curse of sin on the cross, was crowned with a crown of thorns, which is a representation of the curse that resulted from the fall of man. Another severe consequence of this disobedience was death. Man was to return to the earth from which he was made. The tree of life was now out of man's reach as it had been secured only to be accessed by those who overcome and attain victory in the end as highlighted in Revelation 2.7. Before sending Adam and Eve out of the garden, God made them tunics of skin. These were to provide them with effective clothing to cover their shame. The making of these tunics required the death of an innocent animal which was symbolic of Christ's future sacrifice for our sins on the cross. Research from the ancient Eastern culture shows that the main source of clothing was wool which was got from sheep. This was due to its ability to provide warmth and comfortable covering for man. It is therefore possible that this culture started from the beginning and was carried on through generations. Welcome back to The Bible in Depth. I am with my guest today, Pastor Michael Chaze, 
of Omega Healing Center, and we are handling some of the questions you sent us. Now, Pastor Michael, yeah. someone asked, mm. is the process of creation still all going, or it ended on the sixth day? <laughs> yeah, that is a big question, because um, one of the key attributes of God is creation. Yes. And um, it's like saying, um, did the footballers stop play football? Mm. And you need now to understand what is football. Is it just kicking of the ball? Yes. All it involves running, it involves... So when we say God rested from creation, yes. and it is not him resting from fatigue, but creation. Yes. We, we sometimes think that he has rested from his function as mm. the creator. By the way, when you read the creation week, Yes. You'll find key words mm. that make creation. Mm. There's the word itself, creation, which may be banner. Mm. There's um, another one uh, where he makes. Yes. Then there's another one where he separates. Yes. And he forms. And he forms, yes. So those five functions are part of the creation process. process. Mm. And uh, in in... In Hebrew understanding, when he creates, we divide that into two. Yes. There is what we call ex nihilo. Ex nihilo means he creates from nothing. Out of nothing, he makes yeah. something. So he says, let there be. And out there of was nothing, nothing and something. Something comes, comes yeah. Yes. But then when you see the watch the creation week, it's not all ex nihilo. It's, it's not about from nothingness. It's not nothingness only. He says, let there be light. Then he says, let there be, I've forgotten what he says, let there be trees. Yes. There, there is the creation past process where he's causing things to be. be. Yes. But then there are parts on a day when he's just separate. And he says, let water be this side. And then let the land be there. And that is part of the creation process. Yes. Actually, in the creation process is revelation of what has been hidden. So in, in the creation process, something can be hidden and it is he revealed. Is revealed. Because mm. God is a concealer. Mm. He gets a microchip and hides it in, in the sand. Mm. And then the Bible says it's his glory to hide issues and the glory of man to find it out. So uh, when we separate and you say I got a silicon chip out of the sun, <laughs> it, you see like yourself as having created, created it. yet actually it you are just then. doing a separation. <laughs> yes. When he removes water and brings out land, mm. he, he is still creating. So there's separation, mm. there's creation, and in most of those chapters when you read, he creates, mm. then separates. He creates, then, then separates. separates. So, separation of hidden things created mm. continues on. Yes. What we question is ex nihilo. Is he ex nihiloing? Is he forming things out and, of nothing? Out of nothing. Mm. But mostly we would say he is forming. Mm. Because you'll find chapter 2 of Genesis, mm. the word creation, he creates man. Mm-hmm. Then in chapter 3, he forms. Can you elaborate then, on that? <laughs> <laughs> so, creation essentially would mean it he has begun its existence. So, Forming, he begins the existence of man. He can create mm. without visibility. He can, it can be there when it's not visible. And he can form that which he has created into a visible form. So, chapter 1... He can create man. Yeah. Then chapter two, he forms, he forms him. Yeah. Let us create, make man in our own image, yes. and he created man. Then in chapter three, he he literally, because man is not ex nihilo. Yes. He uses. He's not out of nothing. Nothing. He uses the soil to create man, man yeah. but then within man, he gives the procreating power by saying, "Go and multiply." Multiply. So that power is delegated sovereignty, delegated right for you to propagate. So would creation. we would we take that procreation given to man, mm. that man is creating something, 
Yeah, because mm, 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 is given potential to create. Because God can put a thumb on it, He can stop it. So, in the coming of people into the world, we see God forming, forming yes. the body where they can be. The Hebrew sense of existence of man can be a huge debate. Some believe he created all souls that will be on earth on at the beginning. Day. On and day within one. six days, day, day six, he created <laughs> so all humans. Does that imply they think that all souls are there? But yeah, they have not actually re come. Release time is different. <laughs> so where are they <laughs> existing in the meantime? Yeah, the Bible talks about the seventh heaven, not the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew concept is that human souls exist in the seventh heaven. Yes. Um, in what they call under the throne. Mm -hmm. So the release is given time. That mm -hmm. you come in a certain space of time. God says... At the fullness of time, I will release. But Henry, as far as the, I release Alex. As far as the soul is concerned, it was already created. It was already in their created, thought. and the concept is sustained by the fact that they believe that you know, on the sixth day, God created man, Adam. Adam means human race. Yes. Now that alone can split us into four groups <laughs> because there will be someone who says, "No, he, every time a baby is conceived, then God creates." But, actually, yeah, but then we have now learned better that there is a word for me. Yes. So in the womb of your mother, God you forms formed. you. And he says to Jeremiah, before I put you in the womb of your mother, I knew you. Yes. And in your womb of your mother, I ordained you. Does that bring the, the position they stand on that on day one you were created, all the souls? Does that bring yeah, it to the, the problem it hits is when the Augustinian perspective comes in, mm. where we must be born sinners. Yes. Then they hate the idea of saying we were there before. So <laughs> the, then mean, it means the corruption what comes does the, in the transit. What does their perspective show, the Augustinian? The Augustinian, <laughs> let me commit myself. The Augustinians are saying mm. we are original sinners, we are born sinners. But, you know, logically that means every baby is born guilty. Yes. Now that is a huge discussion. Who makes them guilty? Adam makes them guilty. Mm. But then Adam is not, is, we, we need to know how did the Adamic sin skip some people like Enoch, yes. like John the Baptist being and filled they're, and they're considered with the spirit. That they were Working with God, and yeah, and very tight. And so, the the let me call it the hypothesis. And also the fact of that original sin is embraced that, from an Augustinian outlook. And the fact that we, when we read from the Bible, yeah, Deuteronomy, it tells us that the knowledge of good and evil, that a child without the knowledge of good and evil, evil in Jonah, yeah. yet we see the sin being introduced by the tree. That gives the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah, Alex, so, I don't know how far we want to go in that direction. Mm. Because, you know, the, the general body of Christ has been, you know, basically Catholic Church. Yes. Formed what we call the Orthodox Original Church. Yeah. And St. Augustine was a Catholic. And, um, and Augustine, in shaping the major presupposition mm. came out saying that we are born sinners yes. because of Adamic sin. And our being born sinners is a consequence of Adamic fall. Yeah. So now that the reason why that becomes a problem, sin becomes a nature which we inherit. Yeah. And God is the one who creates you in his image. How to reconcile the image of God and sin as your nature becomes a very tough theological paper. Yeah. But for, our, for our, our viewers today who are by bulk Augustinians, yeah. we can say uh, human souls were created, all come into the earth, mm. and there are two concepts, those who believe that they were created yes. aforehand on the sixth day, all of them, and those who believe no, on a daily basis, God is creating human souls and sending them.
or interesting discussion. There. Yes. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. We've been with Pastor Michael Chazo. We shall be continuing with more of your questions. I ask you, if you've not listened to the podcast on the book of Genesis, to please go to your phone or whatever device you use and check for podcasts on Apple, on Spotify, on Stitcher, and many other uh, uh, facilities that accept podcasts. You'll be able to see the entire book of Genesis as we studied it. We'll be joining you once more, handling your questions. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Sunny day, oh sunny.